rose from the grave, the same Jesus. Worship today, worship today. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our online gathering here at 24 Church on Easter Sunday morning. We're so happy that you're here with us. We're gathered from all over the 24 Corridor community, members, friends, family, visitors. We're all here together and worshiping Jesus on this Easter Sunday morning together. And it's a little bit different than normal. Normally, this building would just be filled and it would be chaos. And man, we sure do miss that, but we're gonna worship together this morning any either way uh, and so we're glad that you're here with us i do want to say if you are a visitor and you don't really know us and you just want to say hi you can in the chat uh, on facebook or youtube you can say hi i'm here uh, i'm a visitor or if you'd like to email us at welcome at 24church.com you can do that as well and you can email us about anything if you have a need if you just want to say hey i'm here if you'd like for us to pray for you in some way uh, we would love to get to know you so feel free to do that. Here's our vision at 24. We are seeking to be a gospel-centered family on mission for the fame of Jesus and for the welfare of our neighbors. And we're so we're seeking to do that in all 
things. And we're going to do that this morning as we worship and remember Jesus' resurrection together. Let's pray. Let me pray for us and we'll jump right in. Jesus, it is so amazing just to think about the fact that you really did defeat death and rise again from the grave. You really ab are able to forgive sin. You really are our savior. And so Lord, help us as we worship you this morning to remember that and to just be overwhelmed by the amazingness that is the resurrection. Uh, we thank you so much, even in this weird time of social distancing, that we can worship you together uh, online and still be gathered all together in this way. Thank you for being with us. Help us now to worship in spirit and in truth. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and happy Easter. We are so excited that you joined us today as we sing about the resurrection of our Savior. Today is a day that we celebrate. Today is the day that gives us hope. It's what gives us everything that we've ever gotten from God because it assures that God's promises are true. And I don't know about you, but in the midst of just a time of uncertainty, um, where our lives have completely kind of be re reorganized and, and changed, it's nice to have something to look to, to look forward to see, to know that any kind of suffering that might be happening now will one day be eradicated. And we can't see it yet, but we know it's there. See, the resurrection gives us that. It gives us a future. It gives us hope. And today we celebrate that Jesus rose from the dead and that we'll be raised with him. Lord Jesus, today we lift your name high. You're the only person to come back to life. And God, we stand here today so thankful and grateful for giving us hope. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. And through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? Oh, what a heart could fathom such a boundless grace. The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope.
Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. King the morning that sealed the promise, your buried body began to breathe.
Take the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Oh, Jesus, yours is the victory. Oh, oh hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken. Hey everyone, I wanted to tell you just for a second about our Worth It initiative. This is an initiative we launched about a year ago and the tagline is investing in gospel, family, and mission. And so right now here at 24 Church, we're in the midst of a building expansion. Uh, we're in the midst of doing just a ton of ministry, even in light of everything that COVID-19 has brought to our plate. We're really trying to love on our community well and we're trying to launch some new ministries in the future, a bus ministry, uh, an adoption and orphan care ministry, uh, and a Mother's Day Out preschool ministry. And right now, everything you give to 24 Church, if you give tithes and offerings here, it goes to the Worth It initiative, 100%. goes to all our regular ministry and all that stuff. And so uh, you can find out more about Worth It uh, if you go to our website, 24church.com, you'll see a big button. You can click on Worth It and read all about the things that we're trying to accomplish. Uh, but when you give, it goes to that. Uh, we do depend on your gifts for ministry to continue to happen here. And things are different, but ministry is still marching on. And we're still trying to be about the kingdom of Jesus and love on this community well. You can give to 24 Church today in four different ways. You can give online. You can give via text message. You can give with our app, or you can mail in a check to our mailing address. And you can find the information about how to give in those four ways, all at 24church.com slash give. So take this second right now. And if you give to 24 Church, go ahead and you can give your gift right now. Let me pray for our offering. And we'll just thank God for his blessing and provision. Let's do that together. Jesus, we know that you are our provider and that we don't have to worry ultimately about the things that we need, because you promise that you're going to take care of us and be with us. Lord, would you take all these offerings that we're giving to you, and would you continue to help this church to reach our community well and to be about your business, Lord? Take the money that's given, and would you just bless it and multiply it and expand your kingdom in ways that we could not imagine? We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Hey, good morning, everybody. We uh, want to welcome you to our uh, Easter service. Thank you so much for joining in with us this morning. And uh, we're glad that you're here. I'm not going to lie. I miss you being here, here. Uh, it's, uh, it's not the same uh, as you could very well imagine. Uh, I miss, uh, miss the woos. Uh, I miss the uh, the intros. That's what I'm calling the introverts these days. I'm, I'm uh, sold that somehow this is this is all your fault uh, because you didn't want hugs and handshakes. Here you go. 
this is what you get. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, seriously, we miss miss everybody, miss gathering together uh, as we normally do, but uh, we're so grateful that we can do this uh, and get to share and worshiping together in this way. Uh, thank you to uh, Nathan and the band for leading us. Thank you to Ben for uh, helping us as well with uh, making sure we get all of our information out uh, to all of our tech folks too. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and jump into this. Uh, this, uh, this message this morning uh, really, um, just kind of working on my heart, and uh, I'm, I'm excited about getting to share it. Uh, I'd like to pray for us, if that's okay. Why don't we Why don't we pray really quick here, uh, Lord? Thank you so much for just the time that we have together, uh, Lord, to to worship you. Uh, to come to you and remember what you've done uh, through your son, through Jesus. Uh, Lord, uh, what we celebrate uh, on Easter, Lord, a risen Savior, uh, a defeated death. Um, God, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Uh, Lord, we know we don't deserve it. God, we we recognize your grace, and today we thank you and we praise you for it. God, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be a part of your family today. Uh, Lord, as we worship together through your word, God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts. Uh, we ask this in your son's name. Amen. So uh, this morning, uh, I'm, I'm talking about something uh, that resonates with a song that we've been singing recently, and uh, we've sung it this morning, uh, a Matt Redman song called Same Jesus. And uh, the, uh, the song, uh, I'll read just a little bit of the song here in just a second, uh, but the song uh, brings about uh, a point of uh, that, that Jesus is uh, all of these things, and he is still those things. And, and not to kind of give it away on the front end, but that's that's kind of what we're talking about this morning. Uh, and, I, and we felt like this was an appropriate, uh, just a huge, great opportunity uh, for us to share in that together. I want to read a little bit of that song, uh, the bridge specifically of that song. Uh, and it says this, it says, Oh, he's the first and the last, the beginning and end. At the sound of his cry, all the world came alive. And he formed us from dust, put his breath in our lungs. We were made for his love, but we ran from his light, but he wouldn't give up on his daughters and sons. So he took up his cross and he laid down his life. He did what he said when he rose from the dead and he's coming back again. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, I, I love I love this song, and I love especially that bridge. It's hard not to love that bridge uh, because it does theologically kind of take you through uh, many things of of who we see Jesus to be and what we uh, know of Jesus. And uh, uh, the passage that I'm, I'm studying from today uh, is out of the book of Acts. If you want to go ahead and turn there, if you've got a Bible with you there, we'd love for you to to follow along there. Uh, right now is when the ushers would come and bring you one. Right, uh, one of the ushers texted me the other day and said. Uh, said you forgot you forgot to tell the ushers to bring the Bibles up. Yeah, it was a joke because uh, there's nobody here to get them but me. But uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, we're going to look at Acts chapter two. And Acts chapter two is, I mean, such a huge passage of scripture uh, for especially the church, uh, the early church. We see the beginning of the early church. We see uh, this picture even at the end of Acts two that I'm not sharing today, but you can go look at it uh, when we get done here if you'd like. Um, and it's this reminder of who we're called to be for one another and all these things. But there's a leading up to that. Uh, and in the midst of, of some things that that happen in, in Acts 2, as, as Paul has, has written that, uh, we have, uh, as it, I'm sorry, uh, Luke has written that, uh, we have uh, this, this whole you know, set of, of things that we see the church going through. And as the church goes through these things, is, is beginning to go through these things, things. Um, Peter, in the midst of this, we have captured right there, we have captured this uh, message, uh, this sermon, uh, which we know as Peter's sermon at Pentecost. And uh, with this message that Peter gives, He's calling out to the people, uh, number one, to believe in Jesus, but he's also trying to explain to, the, to them who Jesus is. Uh, and in doing so, he's making some points that I felt like were perfect for us to look at today. We're going to look at those, uh, talk about some things, uh, sharing who Christ is. Uh, and by the end of this, I think we'll all be praising God uh, for what he's done through sending his son, Jesus, uh, to, to be uh, the sacrifice that 
uh, we don't deserve, but that we needed, uh, the Savior that we needed. Maybe not the one that people wanted, but the one that we needed. Uh, and uh, we see that here. By the way, I mentioned uh, on Friday uh, that uh, I didn't complete a thought when I was watching back um, on the uh, the 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 video uh, of of that message that uh, Jesus, when Jesus came to be or something I think I said something like that uh, but I was meaning when Jesus came to be here on earth with us uh, Jesus always was so uh, I, I, that bothered me and nobody else has said anything to me about it but but it was killing me later <laughs> to to have heard that to have seen that uh, it's this passage in in Acts two. Acts 2, 22, and I'm taking just a couple of snippets from the message. I encourage you to read the whole thing, check it out, uh, see what it says. Uh, this is Peter's message at Pentecost, and he says this in verse 22. It says, Men of is Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man who attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that, that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosening the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Incredible passage. And again, Peter is trying to help these people at this point in history to understand who this Jesus was. Peter makes this statement a couple of times throughout this message, this sermon that he makes at Pentecost. Uh, he says, this Jesus, he says it in verse 23, he says, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. He's making a point here. He's he, and and I don't think he's meaning it in a nana and a boo boo way, but I think he is. He's wanting them to see this Jesus, the one that you killed, is the one who has given his life. God raised him up, part of a definite plan. Verse twenty three, there, definite plan and foreknowledge of God. He's he's sharing with them. You killed him. But it was part of the plan of God that this would happen, that he would come and die on our behalf. And it says, going on in verse 23, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. There's so many things you could get into there, uh, but we'll stick to just staying on Jesus here. God raised him up, loosening the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. The pangs of death. Loosening, God raised him up, talking about God raising Jesus up after they had killed this Jesus. God raised him up from the dead, loosening the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Not possible. Not possible. If you're studying out of like your Bible, and, I, and I'm you, I'm circling, not possible, not possible for him to be held by the pangs of death. The pangs of death. I, I love that. Like, I, I want to start a metal band and call it the pangs of death. I, I mean, like, not possible. It was impossible for death to hold Jesus. God the Father knew this when he sent Jesus to come for us. But nonetheless, was the suffering and the pain that he would have to go through and endure uh, and to be separated from God for that time period of which he was dead. This passage then goes on. We're not studying this part, but the passage goes on and he begins to share, Peter begins to share this part where David, who wrote the Psalms, he, he shares a Psalm, I believe it was Psalm 16, uh, maybe 8 through 11, uh, but he shares this part of a Psalm which also talks about Jesus defeating death. And he talks, and again, he's, he's, bringing, he's bringing around, he's bringing around this whole understanding and idea, this has been part of the plan forever and ever. Okay, and then, then furthermore, he begins to, after he shares that psalm, he talks about David. And he's like, look, you guys know who I'm talking about. You know David. His tomb is here. Like, you know his family. Like, uh, for instance, for us, it would be like us talking to somebody in America and, and, and 
you know, sharing back about somebody that we know from our history, like Thomas Jefferson, and saying, well, you know, Thomas Jefferson. We know Thomas Jefferson. We know all these things he did. We know where he lived. We know what he was doing. Uh, we know all of this history about they, same way, about David, felt that way, knew that about David. Uh, and so this was an important piece that, that Peter wanted them, he's wanting them to bring around and, and, and get an understanding that this is a guy we trust. This is our history and this was foretold hundreds of years ago. And here now we are, this Jesus, this Jesus is the same Jesus in which you killed and God raised him from the dead because it was not possible for the pangs of death to hold him. Furthermore, Acts 2 verse 36 goes on right here. And in Acts 2, verse 36, it says, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. So Peter is making very certain and very sure that they understand that, that this Jesus, again, is both Lord, both Lord and Christ. He is God. And he is the Messiah. And, and, that, and see, that was, a, that was a thing that threw a lot of people off because a lot of folks were looking for this king to come and they were looking for the Messiah to come. They didn't quite understand or know that that Messiah would be God himself in the flesh, both Lord and Christ. And that's who we got. And he goes on right there and he says, this Jesus whom you crucified. And again, here goes Peter again with this Jesus. He's like, both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, you know, you say what you will, but I think Peter is really just trying to help them to see, guys, this is, this is the guy that came. This is, this is the one that we killed on the cross. Whom you crucified, he was both Lord and Christ. I want to read that whole verse again. Let all the house of Israel, verse 36, let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both, Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. I think for us, even on, an, on Easter Sunday, I think it is important for us to recognize that the blood of Jesus is, is on earth all of man's hands, or all of us. And you say, well, I wasn't there. I didn't do that. I wouldn't have done that. Well, the, the truth is, 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 in a way, we were. And, and, and in a way, our sin has done that. Our sin is what has put Jesus on the cross. But it is the cross that not only brings forgiveness for that sin, but frees us from it, which is amazing when we think about it. Verse 37, it goes on. It says, now when they had heard this... They were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, this is the folks now speaking, the people speaking back, brothers, what shall we do? What shall we do? So their, their response to hearing that they're, they're the ones, not, not only that they killed this guy, but this Jesus is the same Jesus that is both Lord and Christ, and God has raised him from the dead, again, because the pangs of death could not hold him. It was not possible for that to happen. And so then in verse 37, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. They were moved. God's working in their hearts. I mean, that's just, I, I'm, I'm going to take that step because I think that's what's happening here. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's go back and look at that. Verse 38, and Peter said to them, repent. You know, that's a, that's a church word for a lot of people. You know, we, we hear that or we've seen that on a sign or something on the side of the road. What does that mean? What's that mean for us this morning to repent? It means that we would express regret. It means that we would vocalize we were wrong. You know, that's, that's the first step toward receiving Christ as our Savior. Well, the first step is probably, I'd, I'd say the first step is God speaking to our hearts. But the first step for us to move toward 
that happening in our life is that we would express the regret over the sin that we've had in our lives. He says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we receive forgiveness. We know this. We, If you've been around the church or if you've ever heard of Christ, or maybe this is the first time you've ever realized that you even had a need for this. Uh, maybe you're trying to figure out what this Easter thing's all about, and you figured you would tune in and just check this out. I, listen, I'm glad you did. I'm super glad you did. Please, please hang in there because I, I know that it takes some time to understand but God understood this about us, that we were in sin. We had turned our backs on God. We were in sin. We are sinners, and that sin separates us from Him. We're all sinners. All have fallen short of the glory of God. And in the midst of that, God said, I've got a way. I've had all along this plan in which I will make a way for you to be able to come back to me, to not be separated from me, to be a part of my family, and to be forgiven from those sins, and those sins to no longer have any control over you. Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit spirit. When Jesus went back to be with the Father, He sent down to us the gift of the Holy Spirit. For those of us that have believed and have received Christ as our Savior, we not only believe in something, but God literally lives within us. And, and we, this, it's this amazing gift, it's this amazing thing uh, that God has done for us and allowing Him to be a part of our lives, to help lead us. Uh, many times it's, it's, that, uh, it's like that old cartoon where you got the angel and the devil on each shoulder or whatever it is. You know, but for us, it's not, it's not a cartoon, it's not an angel and a devil. It's God speaking to our hearts at times when we really need Him to, to go, Hey, don't don't fall into that. You know, uh, some people say that's a conscience. That's that's a, that's conviction. That's conviction from the Lord. Oftentimes, helping to protect us from things that will hurt us, as sin does. That's what sin does. It it's it comes uh, as the devil comes to seek, kill, and destroy, uh, and steal. Uh, you know, sin destroys. It hurts us, uh, and God doesn't want that for us. He loves us. He cares for us. And in verse 39, it continues there. He says, Peter continues, says, For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. So this is, a, this is, a, this is such a great passage here. Uh, verse 39, For the promise is for you. I want, I want, you, to, I want you to think about who all could fall into, you know, who the promises of God could be for, the promise, especially the promise of Jesus uh, could be for. Here, here it breaks it down for us. For you and your children and for all who are far off, everyone, everyone whom the Lord calls to himself. You see, the Lord speaks to our heart. The Lord shows us our need for a Savior. We, we already kind of have this understanding, not kind of, we already have this understanding that there's something more to life than what's going on. And we keep seeking, and man, will we seek. We will seek high and low. We will look for, uh, we will look for peace and happiness in everything you can think of, jobs and relationships and things or whatever it is. And at the end of the day, the one thing that gives us the peace that surpasses all understanding, which that's a huge statement of itself, is Jesus himself. God knew this. He knows that we need him. He knows that we need, we know, he knows we need redemption. He knows we need saving. He knows we need forgiveness. He knows we need freeing from our sin. He knows we need eternal life, okay? There, there's so much to this. And God speaks to our hearts. And I, I'll just say to you right now, again, if God is speaking to your heart today, listen to that. That's not me, okay? That's not the leftover pizza from last night, okay? That's, that's the Lord. If, if the Lord is speaking to you, don't ignore that. Listen to what He's trying to say to you. Let Him lead you back to Him. Understand that He loves you. 
He sent his son to die for you. And he did that for me too. Verse 40, it goes on, it says, And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received the word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. So this was a huge moment for the early church. This is a huge moment in our history to see God at work and what He can do and how He uses this message that all these people would begin to believe in Christ and that God would save them. It's just this amazing, amazing thing. This is this Jesus that Peter is talking about uh, that uh, they killed. And at the same time, uh, not only did they kill Him, but they would be the ones to be saved by Him. In 1999, there was a new rock star that came on the scene. Now, if you were around in 1999 for when this new rock star came out, uh, the truth is is that there was this understanding this person had been around for some time and was very accomplished. Uh, But I had never heard of him, and and neither had really anybody else. Uh, And so it was was kind of a head-scratcher, like, where'd this guy come from? Um, And in fact, when when he came out, I mean, like, his stuff was everywhere. I mean, the marketing campaign for this guy was absolutely insane. You know, and and I and I love I love rock music. I mean, I love you know I'm always up for like hearing a, a new band or something, you know, uh, and that kind of thing. And so you know, especially at that time, you know, uh, it's like oh cool, it's somebody new. And so you know, I mean, the, because of this marketing campaign and all the talk and all this kind of stuff, I mean, there was a there was a VH1 behind the music coming out about this guy, and 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 because of all this, I mean, his album went to number two on the Billboard charts. Not only that, he charted two singles uh, during that time period as well. He had a movie that was coming out called The Lamb. And and the whole time, you're just kind of like, what? Where in the world did this guy come from? Like, how has he got such a backing? And things were, I mean, just moving forward for this guy and this artist. I mean, you didn't go anywhere. You didn't go to Walmart, or drugstore, or wherever without seeing a kiosk with, with all of the product, all the CDs and all that stuff that you could buy for this guy. And I mean, just it was just, it was just everywhere. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, things started to change. This artist's name was Chris Gaines. Chris Gaines. The Chris Gaines, big rock star, right? Wrong. (laughs) Not a big rock star. You see, for those of you that don't know Chris Gaines, by the way, I I know some of you know who I'm talking about. I know some of you own Chris Gaines albums. In fact, I I challenge you that by the end of Easter Sunday that you have posted a selfie of you with your Chris Gaines album. You go dig that thing out. I know it's in your house. And hashtag I heart Chris Gaines Easter 2020 or something. I don't know. Uh, whatever. Uh, have a little fun here. But, you know, but, the, but here's the deal. The deal with Chris Gaines was Chris Gaines was not, that was not Chris Gaines' name. He was not Chris Gaines. This was Garth Brooks, our beloved country music star that we all love and cherish his music so much. And you see, here's here's what happens when you've got when you got the when you got Garth Brooks money, you know, when you got that kind of money, and you've got that kind of stakehold in your record label, and you can pretty much do whatever you want to. And Garth Brooks loves rock music. He loves rock music. Loves rock and roll. And he wanted to be a rock star. And so Garth Brooks decided one day, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make myself a rock star. I'm going to change my name, I change my look, we're going to cut an album, we're going to do this huge marketing blitz, and the whole bit. And at the end of the day, Chris Gaines was Garth Brooks. Well, what do you think happened when people started figuring that out? <laughs> it didn't take long. And then people were kind of like, what do, you, what do you think about that Garth Brooks rock and roll album? And you're kind of like, ah, uh, it's not that good. I think I bought it because of all the hype, Right? That's what a lot of us had done. We bought it because of the hype. The problem for Chris Gaines was that Garth Brooks and Chris Gaines were the same 
person. They were the same person. And as fate would have it, Garth Brooks was not a rock and roll star. Garth Brooks is a country music star. And we love him for it. Much like Peter was drilling into these folks that he was talking to, this Jesus was the same Jesus they had crucified. He was the same Jesus they had crucified. Let that sink in. The same Jesus that they crucified was the same Jesus that would still love them. He was the same Jesus that would still give His life for them. It was the same Jesus, this Jesus, as Peter said, this Jesus you killed. This Jesus rose again. This Jesus was the same Jesus that it was not possible for death to hold him. Now I want to read you the story of the day. You ready for it? Matthew 28, verse 1. And it says this, Matthew 28, verse 1. It says, Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. Guards, warriors, people who (laughs) killed people for a living were in fear and trembled and became like dead men. They played possum. Verse 5, But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for He has risen. As He said, Come, see the place where He lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples that He has risen from the dead. And behold, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see Him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came up and took hold of His feet and worshipped Him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And they would. He has risen. You see, death couldn't hold him. Death couldn't hold him. That's what we, that's what we celebrate today. But, but I want us to be reminded of something today, because I think in moments like this in our history, we're tempted to forget who Jesus is, and that He is still that today. You see, He is still the risen Savior. He didn't go back to being dead. He went back to living with the Father, but He's still alive, and He's coming back. In fact, I wanted to read for you some statements about who Jesus is, if you don't mind. Let me just read through these statements with us real quick. And I want you to keep in mind that this is still the same Jesus that was then, that is now. He is still the same Jesus now, okay? I'll give you some scriptures too in case you want to go back and look at any of these later. Jesus says, I am the bread of life, John 6. I am the light of the world, John 8. I am the door, John 10. I am the good shepherd, John 10. I am the resurrection and the life, John 11. I am the true vine, John 15. Take heart, I have overcome the world, John 16. Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven, Matthew 9. Ask, and it will be given to you, Matthew 7. If the Son has set you free... You are free indeed, John 8. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in 
weakness. 2 Corinthians 12. Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Matthew 14. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit. Matthew 7. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do to them. Matthew 7. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14. It is finished. John 19. Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Matthew 28. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my response, my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Revelation 22. This is the same Jesus. And the biggest question you can ask yourself today is, do you know Him? Do you know Jesus? Have you trusted in Him your life? Is He speaking to your heart right now? Let me say this. Right now, while you're watching this, if you want to message somebody, we have pastors manning our Facebook Messenger. They would love to talk with you right now. Maybe you've got somebody else you'd rather call. Maybe you'd, re you'd rather call somebody and talk to them on the phone or to text them and start the conversation or whatever it may be. I don't care. I just want you to know that we want to help you with this. No pressure involved. We just want to help. We want to help in what God is doing in your heart. We want to pray with you. We want to help you. We want to answer any questions we might be able to answer and help you through this moment because at the, at the end of the day, we all need the same Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one gets to the Father except through Him. And listen, the Father loved us so much that He would send Him to die the death that we deserve for our sin, that you and I might have life, life now, abundant life right now, and eternal life when death is to come, that we too will not be able to be held by the pangs of death. The reminder for today is this. All of this, all of these things that we hear of who Jesus is, things that Jesus said, things He called out to us, are still coming from the same Jesus then that we know as the same Jesus now. This is the same Jesus. I hope you know Him. Let's pray together. God, I, I want to thank You for Your Word. I want to thank You for the opportunity we have to know You. God, I trust in you right now, Lord, that you are speaking to the hearts of people, Lord, that are, that are just asking themselves, trying to figure out, Lord, what it is that you're trying to do in their, in their lives and in their hearts. God, I pray, Lord, that you would lead them to you, God, with the help even of, of others, Lord, that care for them. Lord, maybe they're sending a, a message or a text or calling someone. God, whatever it is, God, I pray, Lord, that we as believers would be ready to love on them to minister to them uh, through, this, through these moments. Uh, God, to help. God, that's what we want to do. God, use us as your church to do that. God, today we celebrate the risen Savior. Lord, what you've done through your Son, Jesus, God, thank you. Thank you for defeating death. Thank you that the grave couldn't hold Him. Thank you that there would be an empty tomb. God, I pray that we too would go ahead and tell others of His coming. God, He is coming again. God, we look forward to that. God, may we live in that constant reminder, Lord, that we are making up ground for your kingdom, Lord, that we, are, that we are called to lead others to you. God, may other people know who you are because they know us. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this time uh, of worship together today. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen.
cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree Body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah's death and all. Thanks, Chris, for that awesome message. Maybe you're at home right now and you're thinking about what Chris just preached about and God's dealing with your heart. And we like to offer this time every week after Chris preaches for us to respond to his message. The Bible says really clearly in Romans 10, 9, that if we confess with our mouth 
that Jesus is Lord, that means that he's the boss or the owner and ruler. So if we confess with our mouth that he gets to be my Lord, he gets to be my boss, my owner, my ruler, and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. So we, we really do believe that he died so that our sin could be forgiven. And we believe he really did physically rise from the dead. If we do that, then the Bible says we can be saved. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so maybe you're sitting there right now and you're like, I don't really know if I'm a Christian, if I'm honest. I don't know if I really am. I've gone to church some, I kind of believe, but there's never been that moment in my life when I've trusted in Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. And so if that's you right now and God's dealing with your heart, I want to encourage you to respond right now. You can do so by just praying your own prayer to Jesus and saying something like this, Jesus, I know I've kind of made a mess of my life and I know I'm a sinner and I know you died so that I could be forgiven. Would you come into my life? Would you come into my heart and forgive me of my sin and be my owner, be my boss, be my Lord. And if you pray a prayer like that in your own words right now, we believe that Jesus will come and live inside of you right now. And you really will be a new creature. The Bible says uh, that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. When we trust in Jesus, everything changes. Everything didn't get perfect but everything changes about us. And so if you'd like to do that right now, we want to encourage you to respond right now to the message that you just heard preached. And I'm going to tell you something else you can do. We've got staff members right now. If you go to Facebook Messenger on Facebook, or if you go to our website, 24church.com, in the right bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a messaging icon. You can click. And if you'd like to chat with one of our pastors right now, because you have more questions about what it means to be a Christian, or you have some questions that I didn't answer and you want to chat about those, or you just would like prayer, you can go and chat with us right now. We're going to be there live, and we would love to chat with you and talk with you more about what it means to trust in Jesus. Let me pray for us as you consider this important decision right now. Father, I'm asking that as this message in video form goes out all over our community, that you would touch some hearts that you would save some people. Lord, just a message preached doesn't change people. But Lord, when you intervene by the power of the Holy Spirit and draw people to yourself, when you work on our hearts, people can be transformed and they can come into a living relationship with the God of the universe. Would you do that right now in the hearts of people all over our community? Would you draw them to yourself and reveal to them how good you are, that you're a good, good father, and that Jesus is our perfect Savior who died on the cross so that we could have new life. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Seriously, do not be afraid just to jump on chat and talk with us right now. We would love to do that with you. I just want to tell you a couple things as we're ending our service today. Number one, thank you again so much for being here with us. Uh, it was a joy to worship you, uh, worship with you today uh, for Easter Sunday. And man, we look forward to the days ahead. We're still kind of just waiting to hear everything from the government and see how all this stuff takes its path. But we look forward to the day when we're going to be back in this room together and worship in proximity with one another. It's going to be amazing. In the meantime, we'll be here every week at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live and on YouTube Live, uh, just gathering digitally and trying to minister and send the word out and be a family as best we possibly can. Again, if you need anything, feel free to email us at any time at welcome at 24church.com. We would love to chat with you. We would love to talk to you. We would love to answer any questions that you may have or pray for, pray for you, anything like that. I got one more announcement that I just want to tell you uh, before we're gone. And that's that on April 22nd and 29th, those are Wednesdays, on those nights, we're going to be having our membership classes. We normally have those on Sunday morning, but right now they're on Wednesday nights via Zoom. And you can sign up for those classes right now at 24church.com. So if you've ever been interested in becoming a member of 24 Church, or you just want to learn what it means to be a member at 24 Church, you can sign up for these classes. Joey Boykin, one of our pastors, uh, will be leading the classes uh, via Zoom. And you can ask 
all your burning questions about 24 and find out what it means to be a member here with us. So be aware that those are coming up soon, April 22nd and 29th, uh, and you can sign up right now and we'll send you all the information about how you can get on the, the video Zoom call and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but that's coming up. Otherwise, uh, we're just kind of waiting to see what happens. Uh, so that's the main announcement that you need to know about. Here's our benediction today before we're dismissed. And again, it's the same one we've had the last few weeks because it just seems so fitting for the times that we're living in. But receive this blessing with me where you are. The Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And peace be with you, family. We'll see you later. Bye.